Okay, so uh, here's today's update on the uh, cab rotisserie. I've got everything all hooked up, and I'll give you some uh, idea of just how it's all mounted here. It's the uh, piece of uh, one by three that goes into the uh, front uh, front uh, hinge bolt. It's uh, bolted to uh, the uh, rotisserie arms with a you know half inch bolt, single half inch bolt with a few spacers. Uh, that one's going into the hinge plate, same story again, and obviously the same thing on the other side. Now, about the rotisserie here. This is my own design, but it's based on ones I've seen on the web. There's uh, an MG bulletin board that actually has plans for one that's uh, actually considerably sim simpler than this one. Basically, it consists of a single upright and just a bar across the bottom and... Uh, these will accept a tube to connect the two ends together so they won't either spread apart or uh, or move separately from each other. Um, this design is not a good design. Uh, I like the uh, bracers going from the you know bottom corner to the top corner and on either side but uh, originally I did this dual uh, slider approach so that I could put a jack actually that jack right there uh, up underneath it to, to lift it up but uh, that was a bad idea um, it was really finicky to get uh, uh, aligned right when welding and any even the slightest amount of warpage caused it to bind now what I did to counteract that was uh, you probably can't see it on the top here but because this thing is filthy it was sitting in the barn you can see I ran some welds across the top to pull this so that it would bow like that and uh, and that pulled it apart a little bit at the uh, top and on the bottom I had to do the same thing and uh, and that made it so that it would uh, slide you know very freely the problem is when there's any kind of weight on it it binds up like crazy especially dropping down which is a real nuisance so I would not recommend this I would do it uh, the way I've seen other people do it and and that is just have a single upright with a single slider on it. Have the jack up underneath this part here to lower it up and down. As a matter of fact, you know, that was the whole idea of me putting the jack in the middle and having two sliders was that I figured it to have an even distribution. But the reality is it's always going to be cantilevered a bit because, you know, you look at how much space I've got between here and here anyways. You know, so there's a hell of a lot of torque pulling it that way regardless. So, as a matter of fact, moving the jack further this way, you know, helps a lot to, to counteract that torque and keep it from binding. So, regardless. So, that's that. Uh, I don't think I'm going to plan on moving this thing. I just really want to just pivot it up so that I can do a little bit of work on the bottom. And then I'm going to put it back onto the, onto the dolly and, uh, and uh, be done with it. But yeah, this is a temporary thing. Seems like a lot of work to do just to work on the underside of it. But I didn't want to flip it onto its back and mar up all of the hard work that I did on the back side here. So from my point of view, it's worthwhile. Okay, I'll give you some dimensions of this thing. Uh, just to give you a rough idea of what it is. None of these are particularly critical and you can do them as big as you want. I wouldn't go smaller because the smaller the, let's say, the length of this member is, uh, the less stable it's going to be from side to side. So this uh, cross member from, you know, the outside end of this to the other side is uh, 60 inches. Um, this height from the, not counting uh, these uh, cross braces here, from the underside to the very top is just over 64 inches. And I think the reason why was I made these tubes uh, 60 inches. I don't remember exactly why. You could probably increase that if you wanted or decrease it if you, if you don't. I think if you went much smaller, you're going to have a problem with not being able to actually rotate the thing, even at its full height. So, so that gives you some idea there. Now, I'll, I'll just mention to you what some of this stuff is. This is just uh, what they call a hitch receiver tubing. And this is just standard 2x2 two two tubing by probably about 1 8 inch wall. I don't know exactly, but that's, that's I believe, what about it is. This is 2x2 two two receiver tubing. Now, if you're going to go with a single upright post you probably would want to upgrade that to about a three by three and uh, and accordingly find uh, you know whatever uh, slip fit tubing you can get over that 
Uh, same again, these pieces right here are, uh, are receiver tubing that are meant to accept a 2x2 two two tube. And like I said, that's just a cross brace that goes across to the other side with the other one there. Um, I just had various bolts welded in that are meant to tighten up things. Um, one thing I would change is, uh, is this bolt right here that I used to tighten up the uh, thing there. I thought about it afterwards and probably what might be a better idea would be to use something like a sprocket and some way of engaging it like with a uh, oh I don't know a pin or something like that so you could set it at different heights whereas this one it isn't a very positive lock and if that weld broke well suddenly the thing might rotate on you which wouldn't be much fun. Um, now these L-shaped pieces here that are used to connect to the frame or the cab or whatever you're you're suspending um, are nothing special, just 2x2 two two tubing again, same stuff as, as what it is. They're about, about 11 inches there, but probably the same again there. Actually, no, it's, uh, yeah, each piece would have been 11, so this totals up to about 13. Same on either side. Holes drilled one inch from the end, and then every two inches from there on, so you can get some adjustability to put the center mass more closer to the pivot. Now the width of these cross pieces here are, uh, I've actually got two different widths. This one is 48 wide and that one is actually 60 wide. And that's because some frames or cars might vary in distance uh, from front to back, like the front bumper mounts might be closer together than the rears or vice versa. Um, these are just some pieces of pipe. Um, I don't recall what the dimensions are, but um, let me just have a quick look. About four inch pipe there, and inside of it is, I believe, about a three and a half. I've actually got some spare pieces here, so I'll measure that. And I'll tell you, this is not a very organized uh, way of conducting things here, but here's the inner pieces. And I look to be about three inch with about a quarter inch wall, or maybe three eighths inch, inch wall. Yeah, three eighths uh, or three quarter inch in uh, a quarter inch wall. You probably don't want to cheap out on those ones. You go thinner, and uh, that's probably the point right there is going to be the point that's going to be under the most stress. So you don't want to cheap out on the thickness of this tubing, which, well, it's only one eighth inch wall. Same again, you don't want to cheap out on that. Do a good job welding as well. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, you can actually see I had to run some beads on the back of this to uh, to kind of bow it out too, so that, you know, because they were slightly twisted. So to put a bit of a curve into that, like that, so that it, uh, to counteract the weld on the other side. Yeah, it's it's just too complicated. A single, you know, a single piece of this tubing to a single piece of, of a 3x3 three three version of this would be ideal, I think. Okay, this is rather weird looking, uh, but uh, but uh, there you go, that's the cab tilted almost 90 degrees. Uh, not quite perfectly balanced here. I need to move, uh, move this, actually this has to come closer to here, to where the center of gravity is, obviously the firewall is the heaviest part of the the cab. So, anyways, so I can actually uh, do some work on the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off all the old uh, asphalt uh, uh, undercoating. I'm going to clean up some of these welds here. I did some of this stuff probably three years ago. This cab has kind of been sitting in my shop ever since, and I never ever touched the underside of any of these welds, nor did I ever hit them with any primer. I'm actually surprised how unrusted that piece is. I don't think it was galvanized, but uh, oh, you know what I did? Is I think I actually hit that piece uh, on the back with some of that zinc uh, high build uh, primer or whatever the hell it was. Anyways, not the nicest job underneath, but oh uh, well, what you gonna do? My first uh, try at doing this uh, several years ago. Got a little more experience now. So anyways, that's it. I'm gonna wire wheel all this uh, stuff off. I also got some of Eastwood's inside frame coating that I'm going to use to do the insides of the rockers as well. I might as well do the insides of the uh, cab supports. 
and uh, the rear cab support and uh, hopefully that'll make that last a really long time. I'll also undercoat the back sides of the uh, cab corners that, such as, as far as I can get to them. And uh, I'll probably undercoat right up to this spot right here. I didn't take the undercoating off on, on here but I will try to paint down to this location so how well it turns out right here is going to be you know in question but we'll see how it goes. No, oh, didn't get any primer on the bottom of that, eh? Probably not on this side either. Ah, uh, a little better. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, the bolts are holding it in this position. It seems quite solid in this location, so I'm going to leave it this way. I was a little concerned that uh, the base of this one might not be quite so stable, but uh, it seems rock solid. So anyways, that's it for today. This is rather a weird look at this cab. Um, it looks very, very different. Suffice it to say. Ooh, we can see the roof quite nicely. Almost might want to paint it this way, but I don't really want to... You know, you can't paint it this way because it's just going to be too easy to bang it up. I'm going to have to put it back on the frame. By the way, the underside of the cab will not be painted. Uh, the uh, rubberized uh, undercoating I got, it's actually a bed liner, uh, is not paintable. Anyways, that's it for today.